Hello, I'm Nathan with ebookreader.com. For this video review, I'm going to give you guys a look at the Trek Store Pyrus Mini Ebook Reader. Uh, this is out of Europe. It costs about 49 euros in Europe. I actually ordered it from Amazon UK and had it shipped to the US for about $75. Uh, so, this is a very small, uh, basic ebook reader. Uh, just to give you an idea how small it is, here it is compared to the basic Kindle with a 6 inch screen. So, the device pretty much is the whole size of the Kindle screen. Even the Kindle screen is a little bit wider. So it's a very small ebook reader, it has a 4.3 inch screen, and it also has a different kind of screen tech, it's called Digital Ink instead of Ink, it's very similar. Um, I posted an article on my blog if you want to check it out, it, uh, uh, basically the two uh, screen techs are very similar, um, and this uh, company is actually being sued by Ink, so it sort of just depends on how that plays out if we'll see the screen tech used again. Uh, for the most part it looks just like Ink, um, like I said this is a very basic device, it doesn't have a touch screen, doesn't have wireless, doesn't have a front light or anything like that. So basically we have what we see here, we've got these buttons. Um, on the bottom it actually has a micro SD card slot so that's a definite advantage. And we've got the USB port there for uh, switching content onto it. Um, you can use Caliber or it comes with some e-reader suite software but I couldn't get it installed on my computer so basically Caliber is the best option to use to transfer content onto this. And it also supports Adobe DRM so it supports EPUB, PDF and uh, text formats. Uh, we've got the buttons here so there's like a home button right here and we've got a menu button. And we've also got the little nav wheel right here. You can like move your selection around. You can also turn pages with this. And this is a back button. And then we've got this uh, little on-screen keyboard you can use to type searches and whatnot. Um, but obviously, it doesn't work very quickly using the on-screen cursor and all. Um, and it also has these cool little buttons on the side for turning pages. So uh, you've got the page forward and the page back right there. I do really like those buttons because like however you hold the, uh, the device, it seems like your fingers uh, rest on there. So if you're holding it left-handed, your finger kind of sits right on the buttons. If you're holding it right-handed, your thumb sits right there on the button. So I think that's a pretty cool little uh, way to turn pages right there. Okay, so as far as software is concerned, uh, this device is very basic. Uh, that's probably one of the most negative things I can say about it. Uh, I really like the size and I do like the 4-inch screen. I thought it would be too small, but it's actually quite nice. Um, comparing it to something like the Kobo Mini, which has the 5-inch screen, that's uh, the most comparable size you're going to get to it. Uh, the Kobo, the way they do things, they always have the spaces in between paragraphs and they also have, often have like a big uh, spot at the bottom of the screen that's kind of wasted. So all in all, it fits about the same amount of text on the screen as the Kobo Mini, just the way it formats because uh, the way the Trek Store formats here, it always seems to do the same thing where it has, uh, it doesn't do indented paragraphs. It doesn't matter what ebook you load on here, it always seems to format exactly like this. And you have slight spaces between the paragraphs, no indentations. As you can see right there, there's just a slightly bigger spot than it is between the uh, sentences as far as the paragraph spacing. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you guys the software features on this little e-reader. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot going for it. Um, one thing I've also noticed about the buttons is you do have to press them firmly or it acts like it doesn't react. It like makes a click but it doesn't do anything. You definitely have to push the buttons a little bit more firmly than I would like. But uh, as far as the software features go, uh, let's bring up the menu here. We have, uh, you can add bookmarks, you can access the table of contents. It's just uh, one list. It doesn't have nested. And then we have the go to page feature. You can uh, run searches. Uh, you can change the font size but you cannot change the font type. You can change the font type with text files only and then you only have the option for serif and sans serif. So as far as EPUBs go, you just have to go with the basic font. Uh, it doesn't let you change it. And then with the font size here, we have, uh, I think it was a five different sizes. We got six different sizes. You can go all the way down to really small. Let's give you an idea what that looks like. Uh, so quite a bit of text fits on the screen uh, right there. Uh, so one thing about this uh, screen, it's got the 4.3 inch screen, but it's got the 800 by 600 resolution. So it actually has a higher DPI than uh, even like the Kindle Paperwhite with the newer high-res screen. So these smaller fonts like this, it's uh, really crisp and clear to read. Uh, it's got the uh, very clear uh, fonts, so that does uh, aid it as far as the smaller fonts go. Um, we can go ahead and use the bigger fonts, but since the screen is so small, obviously the bigger fonts really aren't going to get you a whole lot of text on the screen here. You're going to be doing a lot of page turning. But yeah, there are the different font sizes. And then we also have the margin adjustment. So we've got the uh, three different margin options here, small, medium, and large. And then on the second page of the menu, we have rotate screen. So you can actually go to landscape mode. You got the different options right here, rotate anti-clockwise or rotate clockwise. And we'll take it a few seconds to turn there. So here's a look kind of at the page turn speeds. Uh, the page turns is pretty quick as far as the digital ink screen goes. It's pretty comparable with ink. Let's go ahead and rotate the screen back to original. 
Okay, so a couple of other options in the menu up here. We have this auto flip feature. The problem with the auto flip feature though is there's just not very many options. You have one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, and five minutes. The thing is, when you have a screen this small, um, it doesn't take a minute to read the content on the screen. So I tried using this briefly. I'd get to the end of the screen and then just have to wait there for like ever before it would actually turn because the one minute, it's just, unless you have it like on the fo smallest font size, uh, the auto flip feature, it's kind of worthless just because the, it doesn't have like a small enough uh, entry for option for that. So here's another option we have, refresh mode. You can go in just like uh, the other e-readers and set the refresh so we've got different options after every page, after three pages, or after five pages. So what this does is it doesn't refresh the entire screen when you turn the page if you have that enabled. Let me go ahead and show you right here. So it just refreshes the text. And so as far as the page layout, we've always got the title of the book up here and you've got the page number and it tells the time right there and then we've got the little bar for uh, the battery um, up there and it also have the, if you have a bookmark, you have a little icon right there. Um, and if you have a favorite, it puts a star up there. So uh, that's just sort of how it lays out. You can't uh, get rid of that bar up there at all like you can on some e-readers. So that's just basically the e-reading settings available on this. Like I said, there's not a whole lot. Like you can't change the font type and whatnot. And some books, uh, like this book, it had the uh, sans serif font. It just sort of depends on EPUBs. Some of the EPUBs have serif font and some of them have sans serif. So I don't really know what the exact stipulation for that is. It's all right, so as far as organizing goes, the library, uh, it doesn't really have a whole lot of features. Uh, you can go ahead and see we've got the little library out here. We go down here, open the library, and then we got a list of our ebooks, and it tells you the author over here and the format. Um, if we hit menu, you can go ahead and just go to cover view. I'm not even going to try to show you cover view because it doesn't load. It takes like forever to load the covers, and then, I don't know, sometimes they unload and they disappear, but um, list view is definitely more stable. This device is a little buggy from time to time. I've noticed some issues with it. I do wish the software was more streamlined. So for instance, if we go in here, it automatically sorts by title. If we want to sort by recently read, um, then we can just check that. But as soon as we leave this, and then right here, look, it says 11 out of 10. It doesn't even sort the page right. Um, and then I've noticed it doesn't have my recently read titles right either. So it's not the most stable um, operating system, that's for sure. Um, so like what I was saying is if we leave, if we go home, and then we go back to the library, it forgets how we had them sorted and it will automatically do it and uh, it'll automatically revert back to sorting it by title. Okay, from the home menu you can open up the settings menu and there are a few different options in here. Uh, you can view your bookmarks and you can go to your library. The Explorer is for like side loaded stuff that you've used with the um, that you've added on here. You can go in and use this as sort of like a, explore, a folder explorer to get to your content. That way, a second way uh, is different from the library. We've also got your settings in there. Um, so you, got, you can view pictures, search your ebooks. Get more ebooks doesn't really do anything because it doesn't have any wireless, so you just basically tells you to plug in their software. Uh, we've got the user manual here. Okay, in settings, we've got a couple of different options. One thing I've noticed about this device is it has the power settings right here. So auto shutdown set for one hour and standby set for 15 minutes. I turned off auto shutdown once and then like the next day the battery was dead so if you pretty much have to have auto shutdown turned on it seems or the battery is just going to die right away I've had auto shutdown turned on for the past week and I've been using this device and we've still got three out of five battery icons so as far as that goes it does seem to be uh, pretty good at battery as long as you leave the auto shutdown feature enabled so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review right here uh, check out the ebookreader.com for the full written review and I also have some more uh, pictures posted and some uh, more thoughts about the digital ink screen compared to the ink screens and how it compares to some of the other e-readers in the price range like the basic Kindle and the Kobo Mini. Uh, so thank you for watching and subscribe if you like these videos.